welcome back to Fortune and Glory. We're playing against the Crimson Hand. And we had a very good turn last turn. And now we're beginning turn three. And right now, our two adventurers have four fortune. And the track towards defeat is at four. And the Crimson Hand needs 15 uh, to win the game. All right, uh, both of the villains have been knocked out for the moment uh, off the board because of collapsing temples, but we still have two acolytes, one's in the Valley of Hades collecting fortune, and the other one, this turn, if we don't do something, will collect the Gloves of Illusion. All right, let's do initiative. Again, white for Lee and red for Angel. And wow, this time Lee goes first, and Angel rolled a one. And when you roll a one in initiative, you get an event card. So let's take a look at her event card. And it's Fortune's Favor. This is a Treasure Hunters uh, expansion card. It says, play on a hero, including yourself, when they complete a danger. That hero may immediately fully heal and gain glory equal to the number of wounds healed this way. Limit one victory card per danger completed. Okay, well, she could have used that the last time, running out of the uh, collapsing mine. All right, and now we roll for movement. Again, white for Lee, red for Angel. And this time, boy, oh boy, I cannot believe how poorly Lee is rolling for movement. Wow, a one. Which means she gets an event card. And what does she get for an event? Local trouble. Well, she's moving so slowly, it's not a surprise. Play on any hero in a city during the adventure phase. The hero may not interact with the city. Well, we're not gonna do that. Play while in a city during your adventure phase to gain three glory. Okay, she's gonna hang on to that. Uh, she also has the malaria card, which lets her gain three glory. Uh, in a tropical space. However, she can't get anywhere. And she goes first. And she gets to move uh, an entire one space. Wow, this is just awful. Well, she's going to try to get over to Japan. So she's going to move to the steps. All right. And now Angel has a movement of four. And that's just not quite enough. I was hoping I could get her over here to the Glums Gloves of Illusion and try to steal it away from the Acolyte. But that's not going to happen. Okay, so she can move four, so we'll go one, two, and three. And she will move on to the artifact, looking for the Ring of the Golden Mummy. Okay, that was initiative phase, that was movement phase, and now it's time for some adventure. Okay, and first up in the adventure phase is Lee. She is out in the steppe. She's just wandering around Russia and, and getting lost and not moving very quickly. Anyway, we roll a six-sided dice. On a four, five, six, another event card. She's certainly collecting the event cards. And how appropriate. She pulls the blizzard card. And play on a, any hero, enemy, or villain in an ice space. They immediately take d6 hits. So that's good, maybe. We'll see. Or play while in an ice space to get three glory. Boy, she's just collecting glory. Cities, tropical zones, ice areas now. She can start collecting uh, glory. And she's actually in an ice area. So interestingly enough, because she just grabbed that card, you know what I'm going to do? I think I'm going to play this... Uh, or should I save it to whack a villain? Uh, I think I'm going to save it to maybe whack one of the Crimson Hand villains later in the game. Okay, that's her adventure. And now we have Angel Espinoza is in um, Greece. And she's looking for the Ring of the Golden Mummy. And the first danger she must face is a hidden trap. And it says, spot the... Uh, the ground, spot something on the ground before you step on it. I can't read that. I love my glasses. Anyway, if you want to read it, there it is. She either has to make a lore check of four plus twice or an agility check of five plus once. Now her agility is three and because she is the expert mechanic, she adds plus two adventure dice to any tech or trap test. Well, this happens to be a trap test. So she can add two dice. Um, so I think she's going to add two dice to her agility, making it five dice she has to roll. And she has to get only one five plus. And she gets all kinds of successes. No problem. She passes by the hidden trap, and that is worth three potential glory. And we'll put that on her car uh, up above as a potential glory. 
And that's one danger pass, so we will give her one success on her card. She's one third of the way there to collecting um, the Ring of the Golden Mummy. And of course she's going to press on, because why not? So her next danger, okay, she's in Greece and she has to deal with a swampy trail. All right, now she either has to make a cunning skill five plus three times, or a lore four plus. It says add this. All right, what it says here, it says add, if you use the lore check, it says, and this danger does not count toward collecting the artifact. However, if you use the cunning, it will. And this is from the Treasure Hunters expansion. Uh, unfortunately, her cunning, well, it's three, and she needs three successes. Or her lore is only two, and she needs one. You know what? She's going to try cunning, uh, and she's going to try to get three successes. She has three dice, so let's see if she can do that. Three dice, she needs a five plus. All right, let's see what happens. One success. She needs two more. And that is not a success. Oh, man. All right, so what happens is she goes to the cliffhanger. Something doesn't smell right. So, cliffhanger. She'll have to deal with that next time. And she loses the three potential glory. Okay, not so good. Not so terrible. All right, that was the adventure phase. And now, um, I guess we're going to be going from the adventure phase right into the villain phase, which is always my favorite. And of course, the first thing with any exciting villain phase is always the villain event. And what we have here, oh, this is not, not good, vile tactics. Roll once on the Vile Organization's tactics chart and move the villain track up one step. Uh, evil has a way of spreading quickly. Well, it certainly does in this game. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to move the uh, track, villain track up one to five. They're one third of their way there to victory. And then we have to roll on the order of the Crimson Hand tactics chart. And here's their tactics chart. So we'll get into the fine detail once I roll a die. So you just roll one dice. Um, and of course, we also need to roll for um, the Acolytes and see if they're going to... I'm going to do the Acolytes first. So we have the Dark Sanctuary up here. We roll one dice. We get a two, which means an Acolyte on a one, two, three will not be coming out. So that's good. And now we roll another dice for the Crimson Hand Tactics. And that's a one. Uh, not good. Okay, on a one to three, place a new Dark Sanctuary in a random location. Limit one per space. If there is already a Dark Sanctuary in that place, redraw. So basically, they're spreading their influence around the world. The new location for them is, right at the bottom there, Paris. Okay, so they get a new Dark Sanctuary right here and that's going to be placed in Paris which really is really sucky so here we go so now they have one in Chicago one in Paris so at the um, next turn we're going to be ro rolling for two dark sanctuaries instead of one again possibly bringing out even more acolytes which makes things even worse of course okay I was just putting a uh, token away all right so that is basically the adventure phase. Part one of the adventure phase is rolling on the, uh, doing the villain event card. The next is to activate the uh, outpost, which we've just done. Of course, I did them slightly out of order. You draw the villain event card, then you roll for the outpost, uh, and then we do the villain adventure step. Well, uh, Benjamin Crowley was knocked out or uh, delayed, so now he becomes ready. And the Inquisitor was completely knocked out, so he is now, this turn, still delayed. So we don't actually bring uh, either villain out onto the board this time. So that's a bonus for us. However, we need to go over to the artifact table and uh, take our hits from those rotten acolytes. So here we have our two annoying acolytes. Over here, with the artifacts, the first one here is going to have one success over 
in the Valley of Hades. That's now up to three. And of course, they scoop a fortune out of there. That goes over to their headquarters. I guess either one now, Paris or Chicago. And as you can see here, this is three um, dangers to pass uh, getting this. And that will be the third one for this acolyte. So this little goober manages to retrieve the gloves of illusion. And of course, uh, the organizations ignore all of the text on the bottom. So they basically snag the Gloves of Illusion for their team. And that's not good for Lee and Angel, of course. And of course, when we do that, uh, now we're at the, at the end phase. I'm just going to replenish. We need to have a new artifact come out. And this time it's another temple. Oh boy, and it's a temple worth eight fortune. It's the Tomb of the Golden Sun. And it says, during this adventure, you are minus one cunning. So we're going to put that out. We will find out in a moment where that tomb is going to be located. So this comes over here. And the tomb is going to be located in the heart of Africa. Which is interesting, because it's in a dense tropical area. Uh, which means anyone trying to find it is going to have to make a roll to see if they can actually locate it. Okay, now we have to go back over to the Vile organization and see if they have uh, done anything this turn, and of course they have. Okay, so here we are at the Crimson Hands Vile organization outpost. Uh, they have one fortune, so that will not be cashed in uh, th for three for one point on the villain track. However, the Acolyte did manage to retrieve the Gloves of Illusion, and when... Um, any organization scoops an artifact, they get two on the track. So it goes from five to seven. They are almost halfway to victory. And that is bad news for us. Okay, and the other rotten thing about it is uh, when we look at, there's a symbol now on the card, and this has to do with the um, uh, Crimson Hand. So this symbol here, I guess is a little magic symbol, I believe is what it's supposed to be. Uh, has something to do with the powers of the Crimson Hand. Remember I mentioned earlier when the Crimson Hand starts collecting artifacts, they start getting more powerful. Well, if we look here, uh, that little symbol, they do have an artifact now with that symbol on it. And it says now all Crimson Hand villains and enemies are plus one fight dice. So that is going to remain in effect as long as the Crimson Hand has that artifact. So that's part of how the Crimson Hand works. Uh, again, they get they get worse and worse the more things they collect. So it's best to try to stop them from doing that if possible. And of course, it's difficult. All right, back to the board to recap, and that will be the end of turn three. All right, here we are back at the board for a quick recap. Angel Espinoza has four fortune collected so far, on their way uh, between Lee and Angel to get twenty and win the game. It's a long, long way to go. She's in a cliffhanger right now on a swampy trail out there in Greece. Um, she's collected one success towards retrieving the Ring of the Gold Mummy. And Li Min Chen is just crawling along through Russia as slowly as possible. However, she's collecting a ton of event cards, uh, which can come in handy later in the game if she can ever get anywhere. The Crimson Hand is now at seven on their way to 15, which will be a victory for them, and that's not good for us. Uh, however, we have had the villains uh, delayed quite a bit, so that helped us out from last turn. And we still have one acolyte in the Valley of Hades up there in Scandinavia, scooping fortunes in the temple uh, every turn. And of course, um, I did forget one thing. The tomb that just came out this turn of the Golden Sun is in fact a temple. So we'll put the temple out here in Africa just to uh, denote that. And that is, uh, that is going to be the end of turn three. Not sure a little bit, uh, getting a little bit behind the Crimson Hand again. They had a pretty decent turn. Uh, we're going to have to uh, start cooking with gas in turn four. All right, thanks for subscribing to the channel. Thanks for liking the videos. And join me next time when Lee and Angel uh, press forward trying to get 20 fortune. And next turn will be turn four.